everybody and welcome to the <laughs> good evening everybody and welcome to the october 1st uh meeting of the council for north bend city of north bend uh let's see can the clerk please call roll mayor pro tem ellen gothoff here council member brendan elwood present council member mark jocelyn present council member suzanne cordeson here council member errol tremolata here all are present with the exception of council members Colin and Rustic who are excused. Thank you very much. Would the mayor pro tem kindly lead us in the flag salute? Sure. Love you. Be great. Okay. Again, good evening, everybody. Um, we're going to move on to, let's see, council. Do we have any changes to our agenda before we move on? I guess? Yes. Okay. Motion to pull item number 10, AB24-106, a resolution establishing the city's financial policy related to Eastside Fire and Rescue for 2025 through 2026. Thank you. Do I have a second? second. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tremolato. It's best. <laughs> uh mr tremla do you have, would you like to comment uh yeah i think there's been uh some information uh coming forth over the last handful of days since the agenda that we should review um prior to make any decisions thank you very much and mr council member over there would you like to say uh, a simply matter of needing to have a conversation and information upon which that conversation could be based yep thank you very much any other council members wish to make a comment nope okay great I was going to say something. I'm sorry for rushing. <laughs> that meant I was going to say something. <laughs> take it away. Um, yeah, I think that we need to take more time and look at more data and uh, make analysis before we bring it onto the agenda. Thank you very much. Anybody else on this? No. Okay, the motion before us is to pull item number 10, AB 24-106, a resolution establishing the city's financial policy related to Eastside Fire and Rescue for 2025 and 2026. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, let's see. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to move on to consent agenda. We have four items on our consent agenda. Can I get a motion? So moved. Thank you. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Botel and seconded by Brendan Elwood. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Before we move on to citizen comments, as indicated on tonight's agenda, if you're attending remotely and would like to submit public comment, please submit your written comments via in-person, drop-off mail, fax, or email to jborlin at northbenwa.gov by 5 p.m. on the day of the meeting. We are no longer taking public comments for those attending remotely via Zoom unless they are uh, have reached out to our deputy clerk in advance of the meeting to request accommodation. Uh, we will now move on to citizen comments. At this time, if you would like to comment on an, agenda that's, on an item that's not on the agenda tonight, we would invite you to come forward to the podium at this time. Uh, let's see if you have a request accommodation with the deputy city clerk and wish to speak during citizen comments, please raise your hand through the virtual platform and we will take your comments after in-person comments. Uh, please remember to state your name, your address for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Hi, Alicia. Welcome, Hi, though. Thank you. Well, I, when, I, when I've come here in the past, it's been for a little bit different reason. Um, Oh, Alicia Mesa, resident of North Bend at 13419 409th Avenue, Southeast. The property, however, I'm here to talk about today is 112 East 4th Street in downtown North Bend. First, I want to let you guys know that I really do appreciate and respect you all so much. Um, I know your jobs are not easy, and at times it's very, probably not very rewarding. Um, being here this evening is truly the last thing I wanted to be doing. But um, it feels needed. So I wanted, to, and I think that it's for you, the council, that this will benefit, hopefully. Um, what I want to make you all aware of tonight is that our experience with the form based code in downtown North Bend, and I believe we are the first ones to go through it as well. Um, I could be wrong with this, but I believe so, um, has not been without many issues that we've needed to address many times met with various interpretations of the code. The code is a little bit vague at times. 
An example of this is there has been a ton of confusion around whether or not the residential unit downstairs needs to comply as commercial space, even though it is being built as residential space. We were able to resolve the issue of having to do commercially rated fire sprinkler systems, which would have, if we did have to do that, it would have cost us another 20 or so thousand dollars, but we were able to resolve that. Um, there, there are so many other things and I don't want to talk about all of them, but what I am here tonight to ask is that city council consider um, meeting with us or doing something so that we can talk a little bit about what our experience going through this brand new code. Um, this is barely, I mean, I believe it's new. Nobody else has gone through it. And we have had a lot of struggles and we don't want anybody else to have to experience the same thing. So we would um, just appreciate a little bit of your time so that you can understand what's going on. Cause I don't know that you always hear from the city um, people exactly what's going on. So um, that is all I'm asking for tonight. Thank you. Anybody else wish to comment? Come on up, Mary. Nice to see you tonight. Thank you, Matt. I come with my reinforcements. Um, good evening. My name is Mary Comstock, and I'm the regional manager at the King County Library System, representing tonight the wonderful North Bend Library. Um, address 115 East 4th Street, North Bend. Um, we're here tonight to give a report on what's been happening at the North Bend Library this year. First, I want to introduce our wonderful children's librarian, Jennifer Loomis, who's going to join me to talk about some of our partnerships. Uh, Council has a handout, I believe, from Deputy City Clerk. Clerk. On the front, I, we wanted to tell you that we have over 46,000 library visitors this year up through September, almost 5,000 active borrowers. This year, we've seen almost 800 new patrons. That means new cards. Um, almost 100,000 physical checkouts. That's the books on the shelves and so forth. And about 76,000 digital checkouts. Um, almost 5,000 computer sessions on 12 public computers. Before I go into some of the other things on our handout, I want to introduce again Jennifer, and she's going to be talking about some of the partners we work with in the community, including this city. Jennifer. So rather than give you a list of our events, we wanted to kind of highlight how delighted we are to partner with so many wonderful organizations. So I will list some of them. This is not a complete list. Um, the North Bend Art and Industry Group, Empower Youth, and everyone else in the Healthy Community Coalition, the Snow Valley Chamber of Commerce, the Snoqualmie Valley Historical Museum, Trail Youth, the North Bend Downtown Foundation, the Snoqualmie Valley Food Bank, Mount Si Lutheran Church, and Compass, including its Early Learning Center, uh, the Snoqualmie Valley School District, the North Bend Educational and Cultural Association, or NBECA, which better known as the people behind the festival at Mount Sai Parade, Lambert House for its support for LGBTQIA plus youth um, and our monthly Rainbow Social Club, the Friends of the North Bend Library, um, a separate entity from us and, and really key to making a lot of great things happen, the Snoqualmie Indian Tribe and Sideview Metro Parks. And I wanted to highlight particularly three staff there who've been invaluable in working with us and had great programs, Mina Rudd, Zach Todd and Joel Rittenhouse. And they've helped us to do programs. They've given us a space at many events so that we can get out and be visible in the community and reach more of our wonderful uh, North Bend residents. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Also in front are some of our upcoming programs this fall. I wanna say that when we printed this flyer, we had listed some programs in October and November. However, as some of you know, we've had some unexpected closures because of leaks in our roof. Our facilities department has just announced that we are gonna get a new roof a new metal roof, so that will help us with these unexpected closures and loss of our collection. However, it does mean that we are gonna close for about six weeks while we replace the roof, and you are the first group we're announcing that to tonight. So we will close. Our last day of service is Saturday, October 26th, very quickly. Um, we'll open again on uh, the 13th of December. Last but not least, on the back, we wanted to say thank you for your support of 30 years in our building at the North Bend Library. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else have, like to come forward? Anybody on a line? No one online at this okay, time. Thank you very much.
Uh, let's move on to announcements, presentations, and appointments. Uh, item number five, it's a proclamation for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let me get started. Uh, from both the officer, office of both mayors from Snoqualmie and North Bend. Uh, whereas breast cancer is one of the most prevalent forms of cancer affecting individuals worldwide with significant impacts on the lives of those diagnosed, their families and their communities. And whereas early detection through regular screenings, advancements in research, and the commitment of healthcare professionals are crucial in improving survival rates and providing hope for those affected by this disease. And whereas Breast Cancer Awareness Month provides an opportunity to, pro to promote, educate, support ongoing research, and raise public awareness about breast cancer and encouraging individuals to take proactive steps towards their health and well being. And whereas the courage and the strength of survivors, the dedication of healthcare providers, and the invaluable contributions of researchers and advocates play a vital role in the ongoing fight against breast cancer. And whereas by fostering a spirit of solidarity and compassion, we can work together to support those battling breast cancer, honor those who have lost their lives to the disease, and continue to strive for a future free from breast cancer. Now, therefore, Catherine Ross and Mary Miller, mayors of the cities of Snoqualmie and North Bend, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2024 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the cities of Snoqualmie and North Bend, we encourage all residents to participate in educational activities, support breast cancer research, and engage in efforts that provide awareness and early detection. Together, we can make a meaningful impact in the fight against breast cancer. All right, and we're going to move right on to introductions. Item number six, AB 24-102, motion authorizing contract with FCS Group for Water, Sewer, Stormwater, and GFC rates, uh, study rates, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Cha, will you please take it away and provide our staff report? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the record, Martin Cha, Finance Director. Uh, Council, this is a uh, motion to authorize the Mayor to enter into contract with FCS Group to prepare a utilities rate study for the water, sewer, and stormwater programs. Uh, for the listening public, the city operates uh, the three utilities, which uh, totals about 7,500 accounts and generates about $14 million in annual revenues. Uh, the purpose of the rate study is to determine the um, if um, any appropriate adjustments may need to be done or made to the rates um, for the next uh, uh, five to six year planning period. And uh, that would include both uh, to cover operating expenses as well as capital expenses. Uh, the total cost of this study is about $65,000, and it would be shared proportionally between the water, sewer, and stormwater programs based upon the um, uh, the uh, uh, relative revenues of each utility. Uh, the rates that we have on the books uh, today, um, we have scheduled rate increases in 25 and 26, 5.5% uh, for the water utility, um, and 2.5% for the sewer utility, and no increases for the um, stormwater utility. And again, the um, rate study would uh, uh, determine the appropriateness of these rate adjustments um, for 25 and 26, as well as for uh, the four years um, after this. I'm available to answer any questions if, um, you know, if uh, council has any. Thank you, Mr. Chaw. Are there any questions for Mr. Chaw? Seeing none? All quiet in the Western Front? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much again. Um, let's see, okay, the motion before us is to approve AB 24-102, authorizing the mayor to execute and administer contract with FCS Group to prepare water, sewer, and stormwater rates and general facility charge update in a form and content acceptable to the city attorney in an amount not to exceed 65, yes? <laughs> it's okay. We, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, you are. I think I'm on vacation. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Uh, we're going to make a motion, right? Uh, are there any comments? Well, wouldn't public comment come first, Your Honor? And then there would be a motion from the committee chair. If I, I mean, then we'd have our clarifying questions before a motion, before we might weigh in on any thoughts we might have. So we're open. So we're we're looking for public comment right now. 
Okay. Anybody, anybody care to comment? No? Okay. That was over. So we're going to move on very quickly now. Uh, do I have to read that again? <laughs> there you go. Take it away. Uh, yeah. Okay, brother. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Elwood. Uh, I'll second. Yep, thanks. Great. Now we're on track. Okay. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Um, let's see. Do you have anything to say, Mr. Elwood? <laughs> okay. And now to you, Mr. Council member over there. Anything to say? Uh, unless my math is off, that's a half a percent of the overall revenues generated by those funds. And it seems like a very worthwhile investment to make sure that we're on track and uh, that we're, you know, that what we're charging is based on reality and, and professionals' best opinions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jocelyn. Anybody else from council have any questions or comments to make? Nope. Okay. The motion before us is to approve AB 24-102, authorizing the mayor to execute and administer a contract with FCF's group to prepare water, sewer, and stormwater rates and general facility charge update in a form and content acceptable to the city attorney in an amount not to exceed $65,305. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Item number seven, AB 24-103, ordinance amending ordinance 1789 regarding ULID number seven, water and sewer revenue bonds. Mr. Cha, back to you. Will you be able to provide this report for us? Great. Thank you, Mayor. Again, for the record, Martin Cha, Finance Director. Uh, Council, this is a ordinance to refinance the outstanding water and sewer revenue bonds uh, for uh, ULID number seven or the Meadowbrook uh, Utility Local Improvement District. Uh, by way of background, in 2021, the city con conducted a feasibility study uh, to establish a uh, utility local improvement district uh, to finance sewer improvements for the Meadowbrook area. Uh, at that time, the project costs uh, for, for these improvements uh, totaled about $8.7 million, uh, $1.2 million for uh, design and uh, engineering design, and the remaining $7.5 million for uh, project construction costs. Uh, following the 2021 study, uh, the City Council approved uh, Ordinance 1789 um, authorizing the sale of $1.2 million of, of uh, bonds to finance the initial engineering design um, of this um, uh, of the of the improvements. Um, at this point, uh, project um, design is about 60% complete. Uh, we expect um, full completion to occur in uh, during the first quarter of 2025. Uh, the original bonds that were sold to finance the design was worth 1.2 million, as I mentioned, and it was designed to uh, mature in 20, uh, 24 months, um, i.e. Uh, December 2024. Uh, because construction or, um, excuse me, uh, engineering design is not yet complete, uh, the request here is to refinance uh, these bonds for another 24 months uh, through December of 2026. Uh, what this would allow the city to do is to Number one, avoid uh, repayment of principal, um, uh, which would be due uh, starting January of 2025. And then number two is to uh, allow the city to uh, realize uh, potentially lower interest rates uh, uh, during the uh, right refinance process. Uh, when this, um, once engineering design is complete, um, we'll be ready to proceed to construction. And at that time, uh, the city will engage in what's called takeout financing and takeout financing well uh, we will look to issue um, uh, a new set of revenue bonds that will number one refinance uh, the uh, initial 1.2 million dollars in bonds that uh, I just described as well as seven and a half million in, uh, to finance the um, construction of, of the project uh, bond council is online in case you have any technical questions uh, but staff is recommending uh, uh, refinancing these bonds, and uh, this ordinance was reviewed by the Finance and Administration Committee 
on September 10th, a, a recommendation to approve and to place this item on, on um, tonight's agenda for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Cha. Any clarifying questions for Mr. Cha? Mr. Tremelot. Thank you. Um, so the agenda bill stipulates the timeline is to approve the proposed ordinance before the end of 2024. Do we have any recommendation from bond council or from you as to when that rate would lock, um, you know, subject to the feds most recent cut and then the prime rate and are we approving this and locking within the next 30 days or there's some window where we can draft through the next few months and see where the fed moves if they do post-election most specifically great, great question uh we've re we've already received um estimates from uh, key bank capital uh the initial interest rate for the um uh, for the original bonds that we issued was about 6.3 percent uh the updated interest rates uh, that we received from uh, key bank capital shows the rates uh, to be uh, between five and a quarter to five and a half percent um, so upon your approval of this ordinance we'll uh, we will proceed immediately to work with Key Bank Capital and lock in the, um, uh, the lower interest rates. Thank you. Any other clarifying questions? Okay, yeah, fine. In the recommended action, um, please clarify. I think I need to select alternative A, staff recommendation, uh, in the actual motion when I read the motion. Is that correct? Or I could be misreading the motion, but it doesn't clarify to me which option is in the motion. I mean, there's two options. Yeah, those are alternate ones. One is to follow staff uh, recommendations. The other is one that they do not recommend. Uh, our finance committee recommended following staff recommendation, which is what the motion should be. But as I read this motion now, uh, it doesn't clarify that to me, but I could be reading too far in the weeds on this. If I can speak to that, um, Councilman. Uh, the recommendation would be to approve alternative number one, which would be to refinance and extend the existing uh, bond anticipation note uh, as, as staff proposed. Thank you for that clarity. So when I make the motion, I'll say mo uh, motion to approve alternative number one, the staff recommendation for AB 24, and then carry on. That would be great. Perfect. If we're all in alignment, that's how I'll read the motion when it's time to read the motion. Thank you. Great. Any other clarifying questions? Okay. Uh, if any members of the audience would like to comment on this agenda item, we would invite you to come forward to the podium at this time. Uh, if you have requested accommodation to the deputy city clerk and wish to speak, please raise your hand through the virtual platform and we will take your comments after in-person comments. Please remember to state your name, your address, and you have three minutes to speak. Is there anyone interested? No? Okay. Bill, I mean, we just have hand I see on there. Okay, thanks again. Uh, Councilmember Elwood, uh, here's your time. Away. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, motion to approve alternative one staff uh, proposed option for AB 24-103, an ordinance amending ordinance number 1789 to refinance the city's outstanding water and sewer revenue note related to ULID number seven as a first and final reading. Excellent. And do we have a second? Second. Oh. <laughs> okay, motion by Mr. Uh, uh, by Brendan Elwood and seconded by Susan Torgerson. Brendan, would you like to answer or ask any more questions or not even questions, just say say anything? <laughs> I think I'm good to mo uh, move to, to vote. There's nothing more I could add to this to make it more confusing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Susan, do you have any questions? Do you have anything to say? I think it's always great when we get a better interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't disagree with you. Anyone else from council have any comments to make? <laughs> nice teamwork. <laughs> no, no more comments. Okay, the motion before us is to approve the alternate alternative one staff report. Prop, what was it? Prop, proposition? Pro <laughs> proposed option. Thank you uh, for uh, to approve AB twenty four dash one zero three an ordinance amending or, uh, ordinance amending ordinance number one seven eight nine to refinance uh, the city's outstanding water and sewer revenue note. Uh, related to you, it'll lead, uh, number seven as a first and final reading. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, that motion moves on unanimously. Thanks again, everybody.
Moving right on to item number eight, AB 24-104, motion authorizing amendment to the train depot lease with this North Bend Downtown Foundation. Mr. Henderson, will you please provide this staff report? Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I'm gonna provide an introduction to the uh, to the motion to amend the lease, and then I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Jessica Self from the uh, North Bend Downtown Foundation to provide you a, a brief over their, overview of their work to date. Uh, so on June 20th, 2023, the North Bend City Council approved a lease agreement with the Downtown Foundation for a dedicated office and meeting space uh, at the North Bend Railroad Depot. Uh, the Foundation's presence within the depot brings a lot of value to the building and also provides a regular positive presence at the depot and the surrounding uh, park as well. In August 2024, the Foundation uh, applied for a full culture grant to assist with upgrades and renovations of the depot. The grant is for $650,000, and the funds will be used to renovate the existing structure and improve the interior layout of the depot to provide more office space for the foundation, as well as create a multi-use community space that can be utilized by lo local community organizations. A requirement of the grant is a long-term lease agreement between the foundation and the city of North Bend for the depot to demonstrate the community's commitment to utilizing the space as a hub for community engagement and support. The current lease agreement between the foundation and the city is month to month and commenced on June 1st, 2023. To fulfill the grant, the city may choose a lease term of either two five-year terms or one 10-year term. Staff recommends an amendment to the existing lease agreement to increase the term from month to month to a single 10-year lease agreement. All other conditions of the original lease uh, agreement will remain in effect and the amended lease will be commenced on November 1st. Uh, this item was reviewed by the Transportation and Public Work Committee on September 24th, and at that meeting, they requested the Downtown Foundation to provide an update to City Council uh, for this motion. Uh, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jessica Self, uh, Executive Director of the Downtown Foundation, to provide a quick update. Thank you. Thank you. North Bend Downtown Foundation, I can hear myself now. Um, I am going to read from this. I don't normally like doing that, but that's what I'm doing. Um, so you have something you can follow along to if you'd like. The North Bend Downtown Foundation is deeply grateful to the city of North Bend for its financial support. This partnership has been instrumental in catalyzing NBDF's progress toward achieving Main Street designation, enhancing its day-to-day -day support of downtown merchants and driving the economic and cultural revitalization of downtown North Bend. By organizing events like the Downtown Block Party, two annual Sip Suds and Sigh events, and the first annual Music Crawl to kick off the festival at Mount Sigh, NBDF has successfully brought thousands of visitors downtown, boosting local commerce and fostering a strong sense of community. In addition to these signature events, NBDF is actively working on several upcoming initiatives, including Trick or Treat Street, the first annual Holidays Window Fest, Holiday Lighting, Holidays Tree Lighting, um, updating the vertical street banners and bringing the Saturday night fever pub crawl in January in collaboration with Snoqualmie Valley Food Bank and working on the Real Twin Peaks weekend in February. These activities will continue to bring life and excitement to downtown North Bend, benefiting both merchants and residents. North Bend Downtown Foundation has integrated the Main Street four-point approach into its day-to-day -day work and operations. The four-point approach consists of four dedicated committees, each focusing on different aspects of it to aspects of to strengthen the vitality of downtown North Bend. We have the promotion committee and it oversees the planning and execution of major events and promotes local activities, events, and city information. We have the design committee and it leads projects like holidays, window fest, vertical street banners, meetup cleanups. It also is working with the department of archeology span and historic preservation to provide individualized support to historical building business owners. The Economic Vitality Committee, it collaborates with the Outreach Committee on initiatives such as Google Business Updates, Downtown Bucks Program, and ongoing communication with downtown businesses. Our Outreach Committee strengthens relationships with local businesses and volunteers, fostering increased community involvement. An important part of North Bend Downtown Foundation is to provide vital support to local businesses, helping them grow and expand. One example is NBDF's collaboration with the City of North Bend and the Snow Valley Chamber to host a business resource fair. Back May 1st of May 1st, we had a resource fair and it provided local businesses with valuable information on marketing, accounting, hiring, and et cetera. 
The North Bend Downtown Foundation's volunteer base is rapidly growing with contagious energy and excitement surrounding the foundation's work. And the North Bend Downtown Foundation's board members, many of whom are new, have quickly dived into supporting these initiatives. The board includes Sharon Hockenberry, president and treasurer, Brian Davis, our vice president, Lori Hay, secretary, James Henderson, ex officio, Mandy McDonald, Katie Podschwitt, Rachel Bennett, and Tennille Riley, all actively contributing to NBDF's ongoing success. Looking ahead, the renovation of the North Bend train depot will further enhance NBDF's ability to drive downtown activity. The space will become a vibrant community hub for the local businesses and nonprofits. North Bend Bar and Grill has expressed interest in using a depot also for weddings and business meetings. And local organizations like the Snoqualmie Valley Historical Museum, North Bend Art and Industry, and Northwest Railway Museum will have the opportunity to host exhibits, events, and community gatherings. Keeping NBDF in this central location is crucial as it offers space for collaboration and community engagement, ensuring NBDF remains at the heart of North Bend's revitalization efforts. And North Bend Downtown Foundation is working diligently to achieve Main Street designation by December 2025. Washington State designation will unlock additional resources to strengthen and expand the foundation's work, support local merchants, and enhance the vitality and vibrancy of downtown North Bend. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. If you hold on for just a yep. little bit, let's see. <laughs> Any questions for uh, Jessica and council or comments? Yeah, Mr. Jossum. Um, I appreciate um, your time. I would just like you to respond to uh, 10 years. How does that feel? 10 years feels like 10 years. <laughs> um, I think having the foundation, it's been around since, uh, well, it's been about 12 years going on 13 years now, and it's now has a home. So having a home for the foundation, I see it staying around at least 10 years. And I would hope it would keep around much longer than that. And so, um, and what, um, was said before is it definitely is uh, by having a longevity in a location, it is helpful to be able to apply for grants that also helps the city and the residents. So I hope that answers your question. Brendan. It does, thank you. That, that was my question too, is that with the longer term uh, lease agreement, does that make you uh, more uh, acceptable or that uh, you can apply to more grant monies and that's the answer. So thank you for that. And ex officio, ex -officio. love it. Look at you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Tremlow. Uh, what is the timeline on the $650,000? When does it expire and what's your plan like from a project timeline? So we um, applied for it. And I've, I've been working with Dan Marcinko. So we've worked together on that. So this is a way that more funds can come. So we've already submitted it. And we submitted a letter saying that we were talking about 10 years with city council. And they said, we'll hold it until we have a new lease. Um, so we'll know, um, it sounds like we'll know in a couple months if we have got it or not. And then the foundation would be working with the city because clearly the money would run through the foundation to then pay for contract work. And yeah, but once, yeah. If, once you get awarded it, what's the timeline to, I, to deploy it? I think it was about two years. I'd have to go back. I can give you the information once we have it. So just crossing fingers that we actually get the money. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you, Jessica, for your time and all the efforts of the Downtown Foundation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if any members of the audience would like to comment on this agenda item, we would invite you to come to the podium at this time. Uh, if you have requested accommodation with the Deputy City Clerk and you wish to speak, uh, please raise your hand through the virtual platform. We will take comments after in-person comments. Please remember to state your name, your address, and you have three minutes to speak. Do we have anyone tonight? Nope. Okay. Uh, okay, Councilmember Jocelyn, will you please make this motion? Motion to approve AB 24-104, authorizing the mayor to execute an amendment to the railroad depot lease with the North Bend Downtown Foundation in a form and content acceptable to the city attorney. Mr. Jocelyn, and do I have a second? Second. No, oh, thank you very much. Uh, motion made by Mr. Jo uh, Jocelyn and seconded by Ms. Ms. Um, Torreson over there. Uh, Council Member Jocelyn, do you have a comment to make? Onward. <laughs> it's very specific. I like that. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Ms. Torgerson, do you have any comments to make in your second? Ditto. 
Okay. okay. Um, your chair, okay. Uh, Madam Chair, would, yes. would you entertain an amendment to the motion to specify the 10 year lease language in the motion itself? Sure. Okay. Because there were two options presented. Right. <sighs> yeah, you can do that. I'm happy to accept a friendly amendment. Um, I don't, if you would like me to take a crack at the language take or crack at it. Uh, something akin to motion to approve AB 24104, authorizing the mayor to execute uh, an amendment to the railroad lease uh, for a 10 year agreement with the city of North Bend downtown foundation in a form content acceptable to the city attorney. That's my suggestion for the amendment. Uh I can, can I, our attorneys online. Kendra, how do you approve of that? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Kendra, uh, I didn't know you were there. Yep. I am here. That is an appropriate there. amendment. Councilmember Alwood and I heard Councilmember Jocelyn make a second um, to the friendly amendment were accepted, but if Councilmember Jocelyn wants to confirm his second to that. I do. Okay. Second. Okay. And which I, uh, we don't have to speak to it again, do we? Uh, so the motion... We have anyone else who needs to speak to this at all? No. Okay, the motion before us is to approve AB 24-104, authorizing the mayor to execute an amendment to the railroad depot lease or 10-year, I'm sorry, depot 10-year lease agreement with the North Bend Downtown Foundation in a form and content acceptable to the city attorney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you very, very much, everybody. And item nine, AB 24-105, motion authorizing work order with Keithley Electric for public workshop and administration building backup generator. Uh, Mr. Rigos, you need to sign up to buy that report. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Good Go evening, back. Council. Page 87 in your packet. Um, this has to do with uh, power. And as we all know that Power does go out in North Bend. Um, we had three power outages in 24, uh, 2024 alone. Um, we have five, just a little background information. We have five structures to the east of us. We have the sand shelter. We have the equipment shelter. We have the Centennial Well Building. We have the Public Works Operations Building. And we have the Public Works Administration Building. Um, our generator does not power up the Public Works Administration Building, unfortunately. The generator that we do have over there does power up most of the public works operations building, but not all of it. Um, we have used the public works operations building as our emergency operations center for many, many years. Um, in 2019, when we had snowmageddon, it was a very busy place. Um, at times, it was a bit chaotic um, just because there were so many people coming and going. The uh, emergency operations center was essentially a lunchroom, a meeting space, an area for the mayor, council, and staff to discuss next steps. Um, staff believe, believe that uh, the EOC should probably be relocated over to the Public Works Administration building. But of course, uh, we can't ha open an EOC without power. So um, staff, we've been resourceful. And now that we have our brand new wastewater treatment plant, we have an extra generator over there that was used to power up the city's sewer system. It's not being used now. And so this contract with our on-call electrical company um, would uh, move that generator over to the public works facility and power up both the full operations building and also the administration building. So. Um, I think that this will improve functionality of our EOC. It will expedite response time. We'll be able to obtain resources more quickly. Um, and we'll have full service in our public works operation building where all the power will work. So um, we did talk about this at our most recent transportation and public works committee meeting. And there was support to move this forward. And there was support to put this on the main agenda. So. That concludes my staff report. Thank you, Mr. Rigos. Uh, anywhere, oh, there we go. Let me ask, ask the question. Um, okay, so to be clear, are we moving the EOC to the public works out of the lunch area into it, or we will only do that if we have backup power? If, if we yes. don't, if... so to say another way, if we approve this, we can then move. The EOC. Correct. Got yeah. you. And then also, what are we doing with the forty k generator that's going to get? removed uh not sure yet don uh, a couple of my staff are talking about how to use it okay is it possible we can reuse it for our purposes somewhere 
We might be able to use it here. I'm not an electrician. When our, our generator that we have right here, it doesn't actually power up 100% of City Hall. It powers up about 70% of it. So the east portion of the building, but this west portion of the building, it does not. Okay. So we may be able to find it, possibly. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Tremolata. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Rigos? No? Okay. If any members of the audience would like to comment on this agenda item, we'd invite you to come to the podium at this time. If you have requested accommodation with our deputy city clerk and wish to speak, please raise your hand through the virtual platform and we'll take your comments after your in-person comments. Please remember to name, uh, state your name, your address for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Amen. Okay. okay. Um, let's see, Mr. Jocelyn again, would you like to make this motion? Thank you, Your Honor. I move to approve AB 24-105, authorizing a work order with Keith Lee Electric to install a backup generator for the public works shop and administration buildings in a form and content acceptable to the city attorney in an amount not to exceed $1,068,886.80, including sales tax. Would you like to add anything further? Um, it's a good news story. A piece of equipment that was here for another purpose is being repurposed to bring, uh, you know, better and improved public service, especially in the in the public health and safety realm. To be able to have a, I mean, there's now over eight thousand people who live in this town, and a functioning EOC, I think, is a high priority. And I'm pleased to see the city investing in it. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Tremolata, as a second. Do you have any comments to make? Yep, uh, I agree. Uh, I think our public works team works incredibly hard during the winter, and if this makes their job easier and allows us to be uh, available uh, to the folks of North Bend uh, more frequently during those storms, it's it's uh, a good a good spend of money for sure. Any additional council wish to come, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brenda? Brenda? Just a comment. Thank you for putting this on the main agenda. I think this is an important an important investment into our community. And I agree with my colleagues' sentiments and I agree with staff's recommendation. So again, thank you for having it on the main agenda so we could have this discussion and shed light on this decision. Thank you. Anybody else? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's an excellent idea. Um, you know, public safety is super important and I'm glad that we are um, setting up something pretty awesome for future potential problems. So this is this is really a smart decision. Thank you. The motion before us to is, is to approve AB 24-105, authorizing a work order with Keithley Electric to install a backup generator for the public works shop and administration buildings and a form and content acceptable to the city attorney in an amount not to exceed $168,886.80, including sales tax. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you again. And I think that was the last item for tonight. So we're going to move on to mayor, council, and administration concerns and initiatives. Uh, Mr. Elwood over there in the corner, we'll check it again. If you have anything to say tonight. Well, we're at 743, so if we <laughs> get out of here really quick, then yes. So I'll have nothing to add tonight. Your Honor, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ferguson. I have nothing to add. Oh, very good. Uh, Mr. Tremolata. Uh, sure. A couple of things. Congratulations to the Village Project. Had a ribbon cutting earlier this week. Uh, they have been humming very well. My daughter is attending and having a blast uh, down by the North Bend Theater. And also keep your eyes and ears open for my friends at Bread and Bone. They are going to have a soft opening this month and hopefully open to the public very shortly. They'll be over the old Ignition Cafe area by QFC. Um should be a great little concept and a great addition to downtown. Thank you very much, Mr. Gautel. Yes, all I've got tonight is, you know, we've got the first rains coming out here. We've just got this beautiful new pavement. Please be careful. Those oils will make it slick. Um, did a good job. I think the only thing next time we might want to set up some more detour signs because I think we had a bunch of people inside of you a little confused how to get out this morning. Other than that, Please be careful out there as it's getting darker at night. Um, and again, like I said, it's going to be a little slippery, so go slow. Thank you so much, Mr. Jocelyn. Let me, yeah, I'll uh, riff off of uh, Council Member Godhelf. Um, I just want to thank 
uh, everybody for their uh, patience and tolerance during, uh, there is a lot of construction going on in town out near uh, Tanner in the Snoqualmie Valley Crossing, uh, Park Street's under construction with the sidewalk, Cedar Falls Ways, both the sidewalk project and then the paving today, which yes, I also experienced interesting moments trying to figure out how to get out of my neighborhood. Um, it's a good news story that the Public Works Department, which again brings in a very high percentage of grant money such that this city can undertake these sorts of improvements, which make it better for us, but we do have to suffer short-term consequence as a result. So uh, thank you for your patience. That's all, Your Honor. Very good. Mr. Miller. Well, I, as being a former Public Works Director, I do enjoy the sweet smell of fresh asphalt. <laughs> and there are a number of streets that have been very well done throughout the community. Uh, Ballarat, right out uh, in front of us, uh, repavement of a, a street that was kind of rough and they rejected it and it's being done. So a lot of great work being done. I've had a number of questions from uh, council members with uh, regard to the status of the uh, police contract activities. And there's a lot of things going on now. So I'm going to give you a really quick update as to where we are today, because I know everybody's quite interested. And we've had some meetings quite recently that uh, we'll bring you up to date. Uh, the administration and the consultant, Londy Lindell, met with Snoqualmie Mayor, um, the city administrator uh, from Snoqualmie, and the police chief on Friday, September 27th at 10 a.m. to present the city's counteroffer to the new contract which uh, was given to us by Snoqualmie at a 70, uh, nearly a 70% price increase. Counteroffer represented a 13% increase, which follows the bargaining agreements and inflationary increases that could be justified. We are now awaiting a response from them on that counteroffer. That counteroffer also follows the same format as our existing contract, which was agreed to for the ensuing contract, which we're negotiating now. So we follow that same format. So it's easy to see what we had and what we have. Uh, second issue is uh, the mayor, uh, myself, and the HR and administrative director, Escobar, uh, assisting us. Met with representatives from the King County Sheriff's Department on September 26th to explore the option of contracting with the Sheriff's Department for Police Services. The meeting was very productive and we are sharing information uh, with King County so that they could make a proposal to the city. The proposal is estimated to be to the city in a draft form in late November and could be finalized with any changes by the end of December. Thirdly, our police services consultant CPSM is targeting meeting with the staff by the end of October armed with data documenting service calls for North Bend and recommending staffing for police services to meet the demand for service. Their complete report documenting recommended option for police service along with costs will be done by the in the first quarter of 2025. We think we'll have it by the end of January. Uh, in that discussion, we also received an inquiry from the Snoqualmie tribe who are wanting to explore police services as well, and asked if they could, um, if we would share information with them as to what our costs were and what we're exploring, and we intend to do that um, to assist them. Uh, fourthly, staff has met with city manager from the city of Issaquah to explore the option of contracting with the city of Issaquah for police services. These discussions are very preliminary and it is Issaquah's preference that eventually we would have a regional policing model that would, that would include the city of Sammamish, North Bend, and Issaquah. Currently, Sammamish contracts with King County Sheriff's Department for police services and hasn't expressed a desire to effect a change. Uh, the city of Issaquah has the jail, they have the municipal court, and they operate dispatch and they are running out of room and they need a new city hall. So they were kind of pushing the idea. Um, the three city managers will get together and see if there's any traction here because we want to explore all options. So we're continuing to have those discussions. We currently have an option to use the termination clause in our contract with the city of Snoqualmie 
to guarantee a 5% increase in costs for the next 18 months if we cannot reach agreement on a new contract by the end of this year. So these timeframes fit within our grace period that we have with that 5%. And I wanna keep all of you informed as, as quickly as I receive new information on this. So I will be giving you updates periodically. We are turning over every leaf we can to look at the potential for these various options. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, the North Bend Blues Walk is back in town on Saturday, October 5th from 6 p.m. to midnight. The festival will feature 22 bands and more than 80 musicians throughout 18 downtown North Bend venues. To find out more about the Blues Walk, including how to purchase tickets, please visit the community cal calendar on our city website. Uh, the Yard Waste Recycling Program will be held this Saturday, October 12th from 8 a.m. to noon at Public Works. Those attending are asked to use the Public Works entrance off North Bend Way. This is the last yard waste recycling event of the year. And the Fall Food Truck Series at Sideview Park is on Thursday evenings, October 3rd through the 17th, between 4.30 and 7 p.m. Enjoy dinner in the park with a different food truck each week. Uh, council, remember a reminder that you will be having a special city council budget work study on Tuesday, October 8th at 7 p.m. at City Hall. And uh, thanks again to the public for um, being so patient with our construction projects that have been going on recently. We appreciate that. Thank you to the staff for all your fine efforts, and I appreciate you all. And uh, let's see, we had a great ribbon cutting last week. Uh, Mr. Tremolata mentioned that at the Village um, Project, and it was uh, wonderful to see all the families out there having a great time as well. So uh, they're off and running, like you said, and it's a great, great thing to see. Uh, be safe, everybody. We're going to wish you a great night, and I'm going to, with that, ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, motion by Mr. Gautov, second by Mr. Brendan Elwood. Uh, we are adjourned. Have a great night. And yes, we're going to ask for that. Vote. One, let's vote. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Hey, looks like it's a solid yay. Okay, have a great night, everybody.